So I'm going to be showing you guys the car that I purchased. All right, are we vlogging this? Yep. All right, let it roll. So when I was a kid, I uh, sat in a Ferrari and I was like 13 in this photo. And then I always said I was going to buy one. And then I bought a 488. Uh, it basically is the ultimate panty dropper. Um, yeah. I'll show you the interior looks like. This is hard to get in, and from years of squatting, my knees are pretty shot, if I'm being honest. So to get into this does hurt, because I'm like an old man at heart, damn near have arthritis. <laughs> now keep this in mind, I've said this on this channel my whole life. I do not believe that a man in any way, shape, or form is defined by materialistic possessions. In fact, I often believe that materialistic possessions make you weak, because you're relying on external things that are man-made to give you fulfillment or to give you some sort of feeling of hope or confidence or whatever the case may be, whatever you want to call it. But there's a couple reasons why I did this. The reason why I bought this Ferrari, the first reason is because when I was a kid, I think I was like in middle school, and I put up the picture, and I was sitting in a red Ferrari when my family went on vacation once, and I remember sitting in it and I just felt cool. And not only did I feel cool, I was like, um, Whenever I would watch cars go down the street, when I'd travel or I'd go on vacation and I'd watch guys that were older who had these cars, whether it be like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or whatever, I'd sit there and I'd point at them and I'd be like, oh my God, how do they do that? Or I'd look at that car, I'd think it's so cool. And it was like, as a kid, since I had that picture, it was like I wanted to actually make that come alive in real life. And that's the first reason why I did this. Now, the second reason is because when I was younger, my dad got a divorce. Okay, my parents separated, and my dad always said he goes, I would, I he he would always say he goes, I wish I bought a Ferrari when I he goes when I could afford it, I didn't, and it's one of the biggest regrets of my life. So it's like it almost helped fulfill that with him, uh, for him, and then when he comes to visit, he can take it for a ride. So I feel like I'm helping him out. I feel like I give back maybe some sort of satisfaction for his time missing out. So yeah, I'll show it to you guys. But yeah, um, I bought it here in Arizona a couple days ago, and I love it. Um, yeah, it's like basically it's the equivalent to the hot girl with a set of like bolt-ons. So when like <laughs> the hot girl with a brand new set of bolt-ons, so everyone just you, they stare at, they drop the top on the bad boy, and that's how it is. It's the equivalent. Here's the truth, if money helps you get girls, because I've told people for so many years on the channel, it's internal high value. So on Instagram, I probably have like 18 or 19,000 followers or something, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I posted that picture with it that I bought one. Out of all the girls I've known over the years, all of them, all the girls have, uh, since I've had Instagram when I was 16 years old or whatever the case may be, I zero, I mean zero swiped up, okay, zero. Toys like this or materialistic goods are only for your own possession if you 100% want them. Now, the rule I have, number one, never be a slave to material possession. Number two, the material possessions can never own you, you have to own it. Number three, it has to be a toy and something that you genuinely want for your own self, not for the attention or the validation of other people. And number four, if you have to flip it, you have to be willing to take a hit money wise because you don't know if everything is going to hold value and that's the truth so I looked at it I weighed the pros and cons I looked at my budget I looked what I could afford I said could I do this I probably could swing it if I lose a little bit down the road if I ever decide to sell it so be it but that's what you got to know and what you got to understand if your materialistic possessions define you as an individual you are not a man you are weak weaker than baby shit Okay, so I moved recently and in today's video I'm going to be showing you kind of why and I'm also going to show you a, like a collage of content over the past few weeks that we have recorded 
there's a lot of reasons that I did this. This is like one of probably the only vlogs I've ever kind of done on this channel, so I think you're going to enjoy it. Now, since I moved, the biggest and hardest thing for me to find was a gym that I actually liked. So I'll put up this clip. Um, this was me doing incline the other week, and I found a gym that I really do like and that I do think I'll continue to stick with. But the biggest point that I want all of you guys to take from this is like everything in life is the reps. It's the repetitions. Okay, so just like to build a big chest, you have to do a thousand reps under the barbell and it's uncomfortable. That is how success is in anything. If you want to make more money, it's a thousand reps of doing bullshit work that you don't want to do. It's a thousand sales calls. It's a thousand cold calls. Um, if you want to lose your social anxiety, it's a thousand approaches when you go out to you know the social event or the club or whatever the case may be. It's a thousand reps under the barbell. Bodybuilding has done one thing for me. It has taught me how to consistently work week after week after week with very incremental or virtually no return and no success that you can see day to day in the mirror. What it has taught me is it has taught me how to stick with something and that one element of dedication I was able to copy paste into every single area in my life and I definitely believe that if you prioritize fitness first, a lot of other things in life follow at a rapid rate. Not understanding the truth. So someone on one of my other Posts, I think it was Instagram, commented and go, oh, sure, it's lifestyle. I want to see lifestyle. Well, here you go. <laughs> Every morning when I wake up, I typically do some editing for like maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And then I usually have a couple cups of coffee. And um, I also, shit, what was I going to say again? Uh, oh, I, I'm slow to get going too. <laughs> so like, I'll kind of show you like, uh, I'm kind of slow, like I'm not one of those people who like, oh, here, all right, follow me. I'll, I'll kind of, I'll kind of show you guys how I, in the morning I kind of screw around a little. I take an hour to get going, sometimes even more. I have my couple cups of coffee and I really don't have good mental focus until I'm like fully awake. So I'm not the type who can just get up and start grinding and busting ass. Like I really do think too, if those of you who you're trying to work, okay, and you're trying to get ahead, maybe it's financially, maybe it's in your career, right? Like you and Warren Buffett both have 24 hours. The only difference is, is what you're doing with the time, not the time itself as to how hard you're working. So like what I just look at is like hour for hour, what's the highest leverage? like? I guess opportunity or thing that I can do. So then I mean, when I wake up, I'll sometimes just kind of come outside. Um, I recently moved to Arizona too. So like one thing that's helped me is I just kind of try to like sit in the sun a little bit. Um, sometimes I'll sit out here and I get good vitamin D into the skin. Now I'll tell you this too, everyone, so I've lived in cold ass climates my whole life. So I lived in North Dakota like my whole life. And I'll tell you what, sitting in the cold when you got like six, seven months of no sun, that is probably the worst feeling because you don't really have good mental energy. You wake up, you kind of feel shitty. You also kind of just are not in like a good flow. And if it's cold and dark, you're mentally, you don't feel as good. So I already noticed within just two weeks of living here, like especially with better scenery, like mountains, sun, all that shit. I just like, I feel better already. I sleep better. Um, I was also struggling with taking, like I was on basically hooked on sleep aids for so long. And like, I'm finally like, now that I'm getting my body together, I'm not as reliant on those. Um, I'm sleeping more naturally. So I just feel good. So this is kind of how I start my morning. Um, and I've been having actually my best work productivity here too, with just being in the sun and working on new things. You know, maybe I should tell them too, like creative space wise. Yeah, sure. Fucking everything. I like this. You know, the thing too, I'll tell you is that like creative wise or creative space wise, I'll tell you this. I was actually like, even like direction for my brand or direction for my channel and everything, I was actually struggling with for probably like 18 to 24 months. And what I mean by that is like, I couldn't, like, I, it's like I would make my videos, but I, I didn't really necessarily know the snowball of momentum where I wanted to push it. And that's actually super unlike, unlike me, right? Like I've always been the dude with the fucking plan. Like I got the plan down and I just rolled with it. 
but I struggled with that for like a year and a half and I it's like I'll tell you a couple ways I got out of it the first thing that I did was I stopped looking at other people's content so like I don't care if you talk about the same stuff I don't care if you talk about masculinity stuff I no longer really watch anybody I just do my own shit the second thing honestly was getting sun like as soon as I started getting more sun I feel far more creative it's easier for me to think it's easier for me to get into a flow um, I'm happier so yeah nature and your environment I actually realize dictates how you look at things far more um, but you putting putting a put it like if you take a genius and I'm not saying I'm a genius it's like this is an example right if you take a genius and here's Albert Einstein or whoever the fuck and you put them in a shitty environment and they don't feel very good they're not gonna have their full genius shine through so you got to put the genius in the environment that lets the genius become the genius and I think another thing too men have to be more cognizant of is that a word Connor cognizant um, uh, which means just like more aware I think is like hidden addictions so like for the past like couple years too I've told myself I want to stop drinking coffee I want to stop drinking coffee I want to stop drinking coffee and then every morning I go to my coffee maker now it's harder for me than it is for you because I have a three thousand dollar coffee maker and this son of a bitch pumps espresso out like you wouldn't believe my coffee tastes good okay <laughs> this ain't no shitty coffee there's a difference here so it's even harder for me but I think a lot of hidden addictions like you really like what what weakens you as a man is not it's not the overt things that weaken you, it's the hidden things. It's needing the coffee every morning before you can start working. It's noticing that you scroll on Instagram and look at these big booty models 10 minutes prior to going to bed every night without even realizing it's just laying there. It's the, uh, uh, when you're doing good on your diet and then two days, three days go by and you need to eat half of a pizza before bed because you're addicted to those carbs and that sugar. It's that type of shit. It's the shit that you don't see. That is what weakens you. It's the, it's the hidden, right? A saying is like the devil hides in the weeds, right? The devil you don't know is far scarier than the devil you do know. It's the ones you can't see. So for me, I started to realize like how weak I actually became through hidden addictions. It's like, I started looking at my life and I'm like, well, why do I always need melatonin or sleep aid to go to bed? Well, it's probably because I drink three, four cups of coffee a day that loaded with espresso and then I'm drinking, you know, an energy drink later. You know, why is it that I have um, sometimes <laughs> anxiety with work or I can't function right? Well, it's probably because I have too much caffeine. Why is it that I didn't feel good um, in the cold weather? Well, it's probably because I wasn't in a warm environment, right? It's the hidden stuff. So I think too, like overall strength of the man, you got to really remember too that like, your personality, your confidence, your demeanor, the conviction in yourself with work, whether it be with your dating life, whatever the hell it is, a lot of it comes down to your overall lifestyle habits. Okay. Like I don't have any proof of this, but my gut would tell me like, if you take a guy who has tons of anxiety and doesn't feel very mentally good about himself, let's say you flew him to a warm climate. You help, told him to sit on a beach for seven days. You get a beach for seven days, all inclusive, some of the best food you want, but there's one rule, leave your cell phone, your laptop, and everything back home. So you have to just sit there in mother nature. That remedy would probably be better than 99% of the shit that the guy was trying for the past like weeks, months, or even years, because he's getting one again, or wholesome again, or one with almost nature, and just like being naturally, I guess like almost primal. So that's what I try to look at my life as. That's what I try to think. And then that's constantly kind of what I'm doing is I'm like, I look at the shit that makes me weaker without me even realizing that I'm getting weak from it. That's it.